Hey everybody, we are back for another edition of the Panagraph Prep Preview. And I'm Joe Deacon, and with me again, sports editor Randy Kindred. Hello, Hello Randy. Doing well. I'm a little underdressed, but we'll try and, uh, try and get through this, I, I guess. Try, try to bring a little class yeah, to the program yeah. today. So, uh, Whatever you can do. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to start it off. Uh, it's week six already, and now we're going to finish the second third of the season. Yeah. It's play, the team's starting to set their playoff paths here. So uh, We've got uh, Normal West at Bloomington is the first game we're going to talk about. Uh, Wildcats bounced back from their loss in Normal Community, and we look pretty good in doing so. Yeah, that was uh, pretty impressive because uh, obviously the game was, uh, the week before was emotional for them and everything, but they bounced back, scored 76 points against Danville, so uh, which was a state-ranked team. So um, kudos to them for uh, for bouncing back like that, and this should be another high-scoring Big 12 game. That's pretty yeah, cool. they, they all seem to be quite high. As Bloomington is well aware, last week had to run into that unbelievable Pontiac uh, scoring machine, but they put up a lot of points themselves. Yeah, yeah. You, you score 54 points, you usually like your chances, but Peoria puts up 94, and uh, that's just a just a bizarre ability for Peoria to score. They've obviously got great talent and everything, so um, I think uh, as talented as West is, uh, Bloomington's probably, uh, and, and West defeated Peoria the first week of the season, so, uh, so it, the Bloomington defense goes from one real big challenge to, a, to another one this week. Yeah, we talked many times before about how many weapons West has on offense mm -hmm. with Genesis Forest and Armani Forest and <laughs> Fossil, all these guys yeah. they've got. They yeah. just have so many people coming at you. And then Bloomington's well, offense counters with, of course, Sandage and, and uh, Holden Snyder. Yeah, they've, uh, they've put up quite a few points most of their games, too, uh, and, and look pretty good doing it. So uh, there's no reason to think this isn't going to be a... Another long, uh, high-scoring, uh, typical Big 12 game, and uh, we'll just see who, who can outlast the other one, I yeah. guess. Moving on, we'll take a look. Uh, Central Catholic uh, hit the first bump in the road last week at Monticello and made some mistakes that kind of yeah. buried them. Then they're going to try and right the ship this week against uh, St. Thomas Moore. Yeah, I'm sure they're eager to get back on the field. Uh, they turned it over three or four times at Monticello and really set them back, and uh, we were playing the an undefeated third-ranked team at their place. You can't turn it over like that. And so uh, they, they get to come home now, and uh, St. Thomas Moore is like one and four, I think. So they've, they've had their struggles. So I think the Saints are probably chomping at the bit to get back out there and get back on the right track. Another team I think that's eager to get out there this time is uh, University High. If yes. Right. After running into three state-ranked <laughs> conference pros the past three weeks, uh, schedule eases up a little bit this week. Yeah. They've got a winless Jacksonville team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's homecoming for you, high, and uh, like you said, Jacksonville comes in zero uh, and five. They've had quarterbacks been hurt, and they've they've had a lot of things work against them. So uh, this would be huge for you, high, if they can go out and play a good, solid game and get a win on homecoming, and and really give them some momentum going into those last three weeks. Yeah, and as I know, we've mentioned the past few weeks. I mean, as tough as the schedule had been these past three weeks. You didn't really play poorly. No, the they didn't. Uh, they they kind of held in pretty well against uh, you know this past week was twenty one to seven I guess mm -hmm. against MacArthur and uh, um, and a, a big thing they they didn't I know they have a few guys banged up but they didn't incur a, a rash of injuries that really would have decimated them. They they come out of this in pretty good shape so uh, hopefully uh, uh, they can, can get a win and, and get some momentum going. Yeah. Then uh, normal community, they get the uh, non-conference game this week. Uh, they're still five and zero, still number four in Class Seven A, and still rolling after beating Richwoods last week. This week they're going to host a, a Bradley Bourbon A team that's been struggling. Yeah, I think they're what one and one four. and four. I yeah, believe. yeah, and so uh, this will be a, a, a and especially being at home again for a normal community, I, I expect them to really. Uh, they they don't seem to have many letdowns there. I mean, they they seem to be pretty solid as far as being up every week and ready to play and uh, I, I expect this will be another week where they, they take care of business and uh, with Dale and Bodie kind of leading the way. Indeed. Uh, big game of the area this week, the uh, HOIC large showdown that's going to be up in Minunk. Uh, it's Deer Creek Mackinac kind of stumbled a little bit against Fisher last week, got knocked from the unbeaten ranks and uh, they're going to go against the Fieldcrest team. Both teams are 4-1 right now. Yeah, it should be a great game. Uh, and Everybody, I think, was surprised at that Fisher DMAC score, but uh, um, that just shows you in that conference you can't take a week off. I mean, everybody's uh, you, you got to play play well, and uh, I know Fieldcrest, uh, what their only loss was a, a tough game against Eureka, mm -hmm. and uh, so 
So it should be, especially being at Fieldcrest, uh, I think it'll be a great game. And a uh, big thing for DMAC will just be slowing down Cam Grandy, the Fieldcrest quarterback. Yeah, he's had threat both ways. Great season this season so far. And, uh, you know, DMAC's running game is always going to be the key for the uh, uh, for the Fieldcrest defense. Yeah, DMAC has really spread it around this year. Last year they had Jared Reese who piled up most of the yards, but this year they've got like four guys over with 230 or more yards, I think. So it's a, a pretty diverse attack, and uh, so that'll be a challenge. Take a look at a quick, uh, quickly at a couple of the other games on the schedule. You've got uh, GCMS continues to roll right now. They had the big win over Eureka last week, and they're state ranked. They're going to be home against the Tremont team. Yeah. Uh, the other ranked team in the HOIC, Tri Valley, they're uh, they're going to be playing the El Paso Gridley. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Pontiac has been playing pretty well in the Illini Prairie. Yeah, they have. Uh, they got a big game, I think, last week out of Austin Norman, the uh, running back, and, uh, and they're playing at Olympia, I believe, or against yeah, Olympia. Against and, Olympia. And, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I think Buck Casson's doing a good job there, and they've got, got things headed in the right direction. Yeah, like I said, we week six now. It's teams are, are trying to get those, pile up those wins and get to playoff eligible uh, totals. So, We'll see how things shake out, and as you always, our uh, coverage will be available on Panagraph.com as the games are coming in, and be sure to pick up a Saturday morning section to read all about the games. All right, Randy, that's going to do it for another show. All right, thanks. We'll see you later. Thanks.